Hello all, welcome back to another video and welcome to Sammy G's World of Cinema. Today on the channel I am going to be continuing on my Blu-ray collection series. We are already at part 21 now and um, I'm nearly done with showcasing my standard Blu-rays in my collection um, and then eventually we will get to the boutique stuff, which I'm very much looking forward to showcasing the boutique items in my collection. So without further ado, we're going to go straight off the bat. And the first one I've got is Only Fools and Horses, the 80s specials. I don't think I have shown this on the channel yet again, because I did um, do like a couple of my TV shows. I can't remember if I have shown this one or not. Um... I do have a really good time with Only Fools and Horses, I can't lie, guys. It's such a fun, just such a fun show, isn't it? I oh, know, I've got a Trixie on there. So, yeah, I've got some art cards and, and that. Got some more at the back as well. Leaflet there as well. To Hull and Back, which is a good one. A Royal Flush and The Frogs. Legacy, and then you've got Dates and the Jolly Boys outing. I really hope they do um, release seasons one to seven of Only Fools and Horses on Blu-ray. That'll be absolutely lush. Yes, please. Um, Abel Ferrer is a director that I'm kind of, you know, scratching the surface with. I don't really know too much about the director. I mean, I have seen Driller Killer. I thought that was a very solid film. I really did enjoy that, but I've not seen a great deal of that director's films. But this film, I can't lie to you guys, I was not a big fan of this film. Um, Bad Lieutenant, yeah, I really didn't connect with this film, unfortunately. I thought it was just a bit on the drab uh, side, really. And um, Harvey Keitel, whilst I do like Harvey Keitel as, a, as an actor, I just think his character just wasn't all that, all that really, um, but it was not too bad. I'll keep in the collection. You never know, I might give it another go and might appreciate it more. And then we have um, a film that I did quite enjoy. I think, is this one set in, um, is it Vietnam? Sort of like a, a vet, veteran film. And I did quite enjoy it, a great cast as well. Um, who is it? George Clooney, Jeff Bridges, Ewan McGregor, Robert Patrick. That's the men who stare at goats, um, based off a book as well, based off a true story as well, I believe. So that's the men who stare at goats. David Fincher, great director. His film last year, The Killer, I personally thought was just okay, guys. Wasn't a huge fan of that one, but he's made some great films, and this being one of them, Social Network. A film I actually didn't like the first time, but I've watched it again, and you know what? I really enjoyed this, like, more and, like, can revisit, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, who created Facebook. Archie, who used to um, do YouTube, and I think this was his favourite film of all time, so, yeah. Those are both of the, the discs as well. Trent Re Renzer, who does the um, soundtracks, that one, so that's The Social Network. A film with a great soundtrack as well, indeed, um, Atomic Blonde. I've seen this film a couple of times. I think it is excellent. I think it's super underrated as well about this, uh, yeah, this uh, assassin um, that works for like this, um, like this uh, corporation, yeah, and, and I think it's set in Berlin. Charlie's Theron, James McAvoy, John Goodman, Eddie Marsden, Toby Jones, it's got a really good cast in it. Directed by David Leach, who directed the first John Wick film, which is great. And a film I, I haven't seen for a while, I think it's about the, um, yeah, the Black Panther party at the time. And yeah, um, I thought this was pretty excellent. I have, I've not seen um, this, oh, I've only seen it the once, um, I've, and yeah, I've been meaning to go back and re-watch it. I've had it on the shelf for three years now. Judas and the Black Messiah, I think this is excellent. I think it won a couple of Oscars, yeah. Dan Daniel Kaluuya, who won um, Best Supporting Actor in 2021, and I was happy to pay full price for this at the time, because 
I did really enjoy this one. That's Judas and the Black Messiah. A film um, that um, has got a great soundtrack. It, it features vinyl as well, which is gets a thumbs up from me. And yeah, I think it's a very simple plot, but I did quite enjoy this one, actually. Warm Bodies with Nicholas Holt and Teresa Palmer and John, John Malkovich. Yeah, I quite enjoy this one. This virus that spread out and zombies and uh, Nicholas Holt is like um, one of the more rare occasions where he's like um, wants to be good really when in, in like the zombie world and yeah he builds a relationship with this this girl not infected by this virus yeah I quite enjoyed this one and she's trying to protect him from like um, this military force um, led by John Malkovich. Yeah easy watch really i'd probably that's one of the films i would check on and i'll show both of these movies together guys kick ass one and two i love these movies i think it's a bit of a shame we're not getting a third film now which oh, i really really hope we do get a third film because i love these films so much the first kick ass is just so self-aware of what it is it's just so much fun um, you know, the guy in like a wetsuit and he's starting out to be a superhero and that. Yeah, I do love this. And then you've got Red Mist. Kick-Ass 2, which I've still got new and sealed. Picked that one up a couple of years ago. And I've, I, I need to go back and make a double bill of these, actually. Um, Kick-Ass 2, I went to go and see the cinema. The the main antagonist, which Red Mist, which, which would change his identity and he'd become like a um, villain in this film and yeah you got chloe grace moretz as hit girl you get a bit more of like an understanding of like a backstory in that which i think is really cool in here and you get like um, a new um group in here as well uh that i like um, other superheroes yeah i really enjoyed this one i might even prefer this to the um first movie as well that's kick-ass 2 and a film I've not seen as of yet. Again, I can't remember if I have shown this one on the channel or not, but that's Two Guns. I've heard this one's just okay. Just kind of your run-of-the-mill, like, action flick with, um, who's it, Denzel Washington and Mark Wahlberg. I wasn't huge on this film, to be honest, guys. I found it a little bit forgettable. However, Sandra Hewler's a great actress. She's been in two amazing films, like, from last year, Anatomy of a Fall and The Son of Interest, both incredible films. So I would check out more films that actress in. This film didn't really do it for me, unfortunately. That's a Tony um, Erdman. Yeah, I thought it was okay. I quite liked the dad in it. I thought he was quite, like, humorous and that. And, yeah, I think they do a little bit of travelling around and that. Um, yeah, I thought he just went on a bit bit long this film it's got some reversible artwork guys and get this uh, yeah i don't know what that is supposed to be to be honest this film i do really like though um australian film again um i, I can't remember if this one's based off a true story or not and that's some um, animal kingdom um yeah i think it's like a gang isn't it and they go out and like him um, robbing banks and that guy pierce is in this one and then you've got um ben mendelson and joel edgerton happily go back and revisit this one kind of like you could call it a, a period costume drama and i think this is based off a book isn't it um, Anne rice and directed by neil jordan who directed dog soldiers as well i believe and that's interview with the vampire. Yeah, I remember this one being quite good, actually. I don't love this film, but I do quite enjoy it. It's, um, yeah, it's pretty decent on the whole. You've got a very young uh, Kirsten Dunst in there as well. Christine Slater, who I would have loved to see more of. Christine Slater in this film, man. And then you've got Brad Pitt, and Tom Cruise and Ant Antonio Banderas. So very good cast to that one. That's Interview with a Vampire, Oscar Isaac and Jessica Chastain. And I think this is like a gangster film. And most violent year. Yeah, I remember this one being pretty decent. And yeah, I think um, Oscar Isaac um, 
this um, mob leader. There is the theatrical and the, um, I think it's the extended version. I might watch the extended version. It's kind of like an anthology sort of film. And I do remember really enjoying this one. Excuse me. Sin City. I've had this one in the collection for a while. So that's the theatrical edition. And then you've got, yeah, the recut and extended edition as well. Benico Del Toro and um, Brittany Murphy, who was in um, Cherry Falls, Clive Owen, Mickey Rock, Elijah Wood and Bruce Willis. So yeah, you've got a really good uh, cast. One of the greatest war movies of all time. Very sad, very upsetting as well. Schindler's List. Yeah, about Oscar Schindler, played by Lee Neeson. And yeah, it's an it's a incredible film. It's one of the greatest war films of all time from 1993 and for Spielberg to have this and Jurassic Park in the same year it's like wow incredible film I've only seen it the once um I would watch it again but I would have to be in the right mood for it this has got a 4k um release as well um which i might consider getting at some point so that's um schindler's list and yeah definitely one of my favorite war movies guys um i went to go and see this at the cinema i was totally wowed by it i have seen it a few times and that's 1917 done in one take these two guys that, that go on a, a mission um to deliver a message to stop like this um, vital attack it's a really really good film guys honestly nine out of ten film for me this one um, and it's from sam mendes who's done some other incredible films george mckay i think is such an underrated actor as well just to add him um, he's been in some other really great great films he's in a film that just came out recently called the beast which i wouldn't mind checking out at some point that's 1917 and then Robert Smekis, um, who directed Forrest Gump, one of my favourite films of all time. And this is an incredible film, guys. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Ben Kingsley's in there. Charlotte Le Bon. Yeah, there's, it's a pretty good cast about, so about this guy who um, sort of like walks between like, the Twin Towers at the time, using this rope to walk between it, the, the Twin Towers. Yeah, I um, I loved this film. I've only seen it the once, and that was um, at the View Cinema in Halifax, like um, nine years ago. So that's that's definitely overdue a rewatch for me. That one, that's the walk. And then yeah, another Ken Loach film. That you've seen a few um Ken Loach films in this Blu-ray collection series, and this one was pretty decent actually. I think is it about like a um a community service team and i think they um invest in like a is it like new um kind of um whiskey i think it is and that's the angels share i think this is yeah based in scotland yeah based in scotland and yeah i do remember quite liking this one um not one i'll go back to an awful lot but this yeah this is a decent little film this one that's that's the angels share and then we've got um Certainly something I don't think I'll be having for my uh, tea tonight. Licorice Pizza. Absolutely fantastic film, guys. Uh, set in the 70s. The relationship between uh, Cooper Hoffman and uh, Alana Him from the group Him, who've done some great stuff. I think I did prefer this to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, though, guys. I've got to be honest there. But I did really, um, yeah, I do really like this film. I think it's, this edition is quite rare now as well. I don't think you can get this ed edition anymore. Great soundtrack to this one as well. Yeah, Paul Thomas Anderson's such a genius, isn't he, guys? Sean Penn, Tom Waits, Bradley Cooper and Benny Scythe D as well. Yeah. I also went to go and see this on my birthday at Tyneside Cinema. 
back in 2022. And you know what? As well, I share the same birthday as Bradley Cooper. And I saw it on Bradley Cooper's birthday as well. So can't be bad. A film I think, again, guys, is super underrated. I love this film. Um, I think there could have been a potential sequel to this film, come to think of it, just with its idea and its premise. It was so genius at the time. Um, from um, Richard Kelly, who directed um, Donnie Darko. And that's the box. This couple get a visitor one day who um, offers them like um, a million dollars, but they have to push the button and then one person that they, they've never met or been acquainted with will die. They have to make that sacrifice and then other things start to escalate along the way and it's not as it seems yet. It's, oh, it's a really good little movie, this guy's. And a film from kind of like from a childhood, pretty dark as well. I love this film. Again, I think this film super underrated and again could have led on to a potential sequel but i'm happy with how it was as a standard film and that's um where the wild things are the live action adaptation of this i think is great really it's um got some great voice actors in there as well like you've got um james gandolfini sadly missed uh Catherine o'hara chris cooper Mark Ruffalo, Catherine Keener as well, Forrest Whitaker. So you've got a great like voice cast to this one. And yeah, this, the, again, the music in this is kind of ornate. It's really cool. And it's a great like um, sort of like world building movie as well. I know my very good friend Jack at Bring Your Own Popcorn is a big fan of this director, Bill Forsyth. And yeah, I think I remember this film just being okay. I, you know, I do love um, Gregory's Girl and Local Heroes, another really good one. Just okay for me though. There's another couple of these films I would like to check out. I think Comfort and Joy is another one. It's like, a, I think it's like, again, a costume period piece. I think it's again, based off like a book as well. And this film I quite enjoyed actually, starring James, James Mason. Alan Bates is in there and Lynn Redgrave and that's Hey There Georgie Girl. I thought the guy, is it, it, James Mason was at him in this, um, his character was a bit a bit over the top but I quite liked his character in this and yeah I think there's quite a good like relationship sort of story, it's kind of like a kitchen sink sort of drama. Guess who's coming to dinner? So yeah, absolutely love this film guys fantastic movie set in like um one location i think throughout the film like him in, in this house i think it is Catherine hepburn when um, you know like she has a relationship with um sydney potier's character spencer tracy's character who um is sort of like got his own like um opinions and he's got like um sort of like his own like demands and that but yeah it's um it's a fantastic film, guys, and just brilliantly acted as well. The Alfred Hitchcock, The Collection, and this contains 14 films. Alfred Hitchcock is a director I need to spend more time with. I saw the likes of James Movie Bug got this at the time, and I thought, I saw it for a great price, and I, yeah, I definitely jumped on this. Saboteur, which I think Marcus is at um, X-File, is it 2780, I think it is? He um, talked about that one recently. Um, apologies, Marcus, if I got like your channel name wrong there. Do apologise about that. But, but I think he did quite enjoy that one, that Shadow of a Doubt. And then there's Rub, which is fantastic, guys. I, I, I was talking about that one on Jordan's live stream recently. And um, yeah, me and Alan... Alan Scouser, we both agreed. We thought that was a brilliant film. Rear Window, which today is my favourite Alfred Hitchcock film. The Trouble with Harry, which I have not seen. I'm really glad they, they picked their original posters as well. Um, the Man Who Knew Too Much, the remake of the original, also by Alfred Hitchcock, which I need to check out the original version, but that remake was great. Vertigo, which was one of the 
my favourite first time watches of 2022. I thought that was absolutely excellent. Superb. Top three Alfred Hitchcock films that for me. The first Psycho, which is phenomenal. Wonderful film. And then we've got The Birds, which is also a song by Elbow. We've got Marnie, which I've just, I've heard is just okay. I've not seen that one. Tom Curtain, I've not seen as well. Topaz. Frenzy, which again, I think Alan really enjoyed that one. So I will have to check that one out, out at some point. Al, definitely. And then Family Plot, which I've heard decent things about. A bit more collage there. 30 quid, which for 14 films on Blu-ray, that is a pretty good deal. So I hope there was something for everyone in this video. Again, guys, thank you so much for all the lovely comments and messages. Really do appreciate it. And yeah, um, do let me know, guys, if you have seen any of these movies. The next instalment in this collection series, I might start moving on to the World Cinema Collection. That might be my next instalment. So thanks for watching. Cheers for stopping by. And until next time, I'll see you for the next video. Bye bye.